preparedness, should I say or should I go? Uh, we're basically going to be shoring up your survival uh, arsenal, if you will. Um, so Pam and I will be going through things that are helping us currently, things that we think can also help you. I made a bit of a, it's a readiness check-in, so I'll just review it uh, before we start with the slides. Uh, it's at the end, yes. And so first, we, I want everybody to think about, actually, you know what, before we start, before we start, can everybody take, okay, no problem, H, you're here and you can hear us, so wonderful. Thank you for staying with us. Um, I want everybody to put their hands on their belly. Take them on your hands. Shake them out a bit. Place them on your belly. And I want you to take a deep breath in. And fill your stomach with air. And let it out. And take another deep breath in. And hold it. And let it out. I'm gonna do two more times, another deep breath in. And let it out. Last time, another deep breath in. And let it out. Okay, so We've all just recentered ourselves. You know, there's something that definitely helped me when I was in CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy. And it's the whole idea that oxygenating your body will recenter you and it actually changes the composition of your body in that moment. So as we're going through these things today, let's just remember to continue breathing because that's also gonna calm down our responses of anxiety or tra trauma responses. Right, because these things that we're talking about, they can make us feel a bit anxious, but remember, these are here to help you. So we want to quell that feeling and give you resources that you can go to so that you don't feel unprepared or unbalanced or like you don't have anything because you have a lot. So we're just going to really focus on the things that you do have that maybe you don't realize that you have at this point. Right, so at this check in, um, one of the first things you can do is take stock of what you do have on hand. Like what resources do you have or what items do you already have? Because the point isn't to go out and start buying a whole bunch of stuff. Right? That's, that's an issue right now, you know, things of income, of, of, what, of a long term of like how much money do I have. Don't, don't start buying all a whole bunch of stuff. You, there's a lot of things in your house um, that even maybe friends have that you may not realize. So we want to focus on that. Um, is the oh yeah 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 I just had a slide that was like yeah you know, I was like well, let's just throw that out let's throw that out there. Okay, so the second part is we're gonna talk about preparing yourself. I think Dee brought it up is like thinking about uh, routines, right? Routines are really important at a time like this because we are feeling so unbalanced, and and a lot of our usual routines have changed, and so now that we're operating in these really um, big, um, uh, I'm sorry, virtual spaces, that this is a way we, we're gonna talk about how you can create routines for yourself. Sorry, I'm just gonna check something in the chat. Oh yeah, so that you can read it better on the slide. Pam, should I share my screen? Because I know that that slide doesn't pop out. Or can oh, you the put slide it doesn't pop out? Let me put it up yeah, again. Can you put it in present mode? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Allison. No problem. Okay. How, how is this now? Is this better? I think that's, is that, okay, perfect. Okay, so creating routines, thinking about our food, the things that really nourish ourselves, you know, there's a lot of things that we can grab, especially if any of us live in, in concentrated food deserts. However, there are ways that we could still remember that we need to be uh, consuming things that are nourishing for our particular bodies. Everybody's body is different. So we're gonna talk about that and remembering that hydration is key. Another thing that was brought up whether you are, you know, leaving your house or whatnot, which we're not supposed to, but we do have to go out and get things, right? So just in general, the, uh, having a consistent hydration uh, routine or just like practice is really important. Also, your health uh, regarding your mental and your physical health, because these two things are things that will help you 
throughout, so the short term and long term, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I feel like with health, um, there's this kind of desire to prioritize physical health over mental health right now. Um, I, I think it's definitely, you know, obviously, you know, there is like a hierarchy of things, but mental health is so important because if you're not right, like you're liable to do some crazy stuff. You know what I mean? Exactly. Crazy stuff. Yeah, exactly. And so we're going to also talk about replenishing your supply, the ways that you can do this. And Pam, we, we discussed, we actually talked about this last night, like different resources that Pam particularly can share and things that we've been seeing around in, in say our given neighborhoods, but ways that, you know, some of us can uh, receive delivery, like if you need to re receive delivery of your groceries, then going through the protocol of actually sanitizing or cleaning your groceries afterwards, because that's also just as important because you are bringing in new materials into your spaces. Um, and also there are also resources for free food because there are places that are donating food and donating uh, meals if that's something that you need because some of us really do need this right now. Uh, also walking and biking. If any places that you're going to, the preferred mode of transportation is walking and biking. It, it is also better if it is your own bike. If it is a city bike, wiping that thing down like nobody's business. I saw a guy hug his friend and then hop on a city bike when I went to go pick up my my groceries and I was like the audacity are people like, like oh. hey, nobody said anything and I took note and I made sure I shifted when he walked towards me but anyway we're all out here doing the things we're doing let's get to it now we also want to stay informed right but we have to be careful in the ways that we are consuming this information so it's really important that we make boundaries for ourselves mm -hmm. and even making boundaries for your friends and your family i don't know about you but i've re been receiving a an influx of text messages <laughs> of other messages of like of of pandemic based humor and and just like full on articles at every moment i didn't even know my dad knew how to use instagram <laughs> Instagram posts, and I don't know where that came from. I'm sure it was from one of his patients. But anyway, the point is, you need to start be really. This is this is in hand with your mental health. We need to make boundaries. We need to make boundaries for ourselves and others for the ways in which we are consuming information. It we we our, our media operates on a 24-hour news cycle. So in that news cycle is built in a stress and a trauma response because that is the ways in which they can keep us tuned in now it yeah. is important to know what's going on around you so that you you are prepared and you don't walk into something but you don't need to be consuming stats every single second That's yeah if you're like home in your apartment indefinitely you know what i mean it doesn't matter if you're like it, you'll still get the same kind of information whether you check in twice a day or like all the time so at that point it just makes sense to just you know have specific times of the day, a grounded time that you mentally, you know, like prepare yourself for because sometimes, and also just like the friends sending you links thing, like just very nice, like just, you know, flip the phone. It's like, it drives me crazy. My mom sends me like the, I get the Asian news and like the, like the Western news has been like really like, um, cognitively really <laughs> difficult but yeah I mean um I also you know different people have different thresholds for this stuff I kind of like I have like a high immediate threshold for emotional news and then I reach some kind of like invisible uh like moment where like a, like a, this weird event horizon where like I just fall apart and like disintegrate you know and that's valid, especially with everything coming in. Yeah. And leading up with that, with that threshold, we're just going to stress that we are here to do our best and breathe. And above all, safety first. This, this rush to get everything and grab everything and to shore up your immunity in dangerous ways, that is not the plan. Um, I, I will speak about, um, when we speak about immunity, the things that you can be having on a regular basis and things that you really should only be putting into your body uh, when you are feeling any type of sick. Um, because 
even if you are doing pharmaceuticals or plant medicine, at the end of the day, they're all medicines and everything has a toxicity level. And we must remind ourselves of that. Like plants are not here to just be used just because all of a sudden we're freaking out. You know, they have their own uh, powers and, and specifically their concentrations. So you really need to be careful for what you're putting in your body because if your body is not immunocompromised and you're putting something in there that is supposed to be fighting a, a response, you are just uh, increasing your immunity response in the long run. So we will talk about all things and this is the check-in. At the end, we can also share these things, but I'm gonna let Pam start running through the slides and I'll add in. For sure. Hey y'all. Um, yeah, so the, the one thing that like, I just wanna reiterate what Rena said, um, you know, try your best because like, you know, we all have different means and we all have different friend groups and we all have different, you know, uh, like our like our baseball stats are all different, you know. So like uh, try your best and trust it's good enough. We're all here for a reason. Our, you know, ancestors grappled with a lot of the same primordial fear that we're being reacquainted with now. So that knowledge is definitely still with us and um, something to definitely be grateful for. So, um, so we talked a little bit, we introduced ourselves and, you know, what, we, what I was, you know, re, me and Rena were trying to figure out like what kind of um, uh, things are you guys grappling with and like what kind of decisions are you mulling over? Um, and, but mostly what I want to say is like, we got to take it day by day because this thing is like, it's rapid. It's, it's just moving at this like breakneck speed so just you don't necessarily have to have everything plotted out and figured out in this moment um just remain flexible um trust in your ability to adapt and um right now like the main strategy for me has always been for moving forward has been um preserving optionality so as time uh ticks on we are losing um, some options and we've already seen that with supplies at grocery stores running out. It's kind of like induced demand of toilet paper. So the most important thing right now, the most critical I think is just trying in this uncertain time to just kind of find maneuverability and um, preserve optionality consciously with the resources that we have available. Um, so uh, like just to reiterate what Rena had said before, um, preparedness is just, it's more than just buying stuff. I know that it feels, it, it can be really comforting to have um, things already, you know, like necessary items for sure. But then, you know, there, there, there is like a necessity and then there's like sort of like the emotional feeling that you get after buying it. So preparedness is more than just stuff. It's also, you know, the research and time and effort that it takes. Um, and that's all stuff that, you, that can be done with uh, the internet and with just investment of time and organization of documents and all kinds of stuff. Right. And I went Sorry, I want to add to that as well, that, um, that we, we had to remember, and this is something that we remind ourselves of, is like, we're in, we, we're in, while they're saying this is a state of emergency, we are not in a natural disaster, right? So we don't need to operate yeah. like we're, we're, we're in a natural disaster. Like the outside is still happening. Our houses and uh, places of living have not been blown away. Electricity, thank God, hasn't been cut off in gas and whatnot. So we need to remember that we actually do have a lot of things, a lot of uh, resources at our disposal for our survival. So we should remember that we don't want to start operating as if we're in a natural disaster. I know like, as I was doing research for this, there are a lot of go bag preparations for if you're in a natural disaster and very few if you're in a pandemic. And so we want to remind all of ourselves, everybody, that we have a lot of resources that we're sometimes not thinking about because everything is geared towards if you're in a natural disaster. But, you know, a lot of people spoke about, and I've been, we've been grappling this, my sister and I, our mom has kept texting us that they're going to come get us. 
<gasps> your little Nigerian behind is not coming to get me. I'm not going anywhere. Um, and I've had to say this many times and nobody <laughs> wants to hear it. And they think I'm being selfish, but I'm not. My sister and I also thought about this yesterday. <laughs> so it's like, like no African parent wants to hear you say you're not going anywhere. Like it's not going very well. And I understand that that's why we're all here together. But we need to remember that our parents also like, they, they have gone through different things in our lives. Like my parents have gone through a, a civil war. So like their, their brain wrapping around this is like a lot different. It's like, unite the family unit, protect each other. And I'm like, yo, like one of us could potentially infect you. I'm not going anywhere. Like, right. so th that's the thing is that <laughs> there, that we, we need to remember to, that we are not operating this. I did have a friend that said we need to operate as if we're at war and, and that's fine, but we are not in a natural disaster. And there are a lot of things that we have, um, that we can, we, we can do right now. So I just wanted to. Yeah, yeah, we definitely, we definitely have to adjust a lot of the natural disaster sort of thinking because a lot of it has been like, you know, um, uh, geared towards like Hurricane Sandy right. or like, <laughs> you know, uh, nuclear apocalypse and not really towards like uh, something like this, which has its own sort of like uh, contingencies, has its own, um, you know, rubric and everything. So um, adjusting is definitely something that like, and, and, and also we're, we've been resourceful our whole lives and, um, so there's a lot of um, there's a knowledge a lot of knowledge that's already with us. Um, I wanted to uh, s sort of you know say that there is no right choice, there is no wrong choice. Everything's going to have some drawbacks. Everything's going to have some pros and cons. And um, if you could eliminate for me, what was like really useful is eliminating the feeling that. Like if I choose incorrectly, I'll die or something, you know, equally as dire. The truth is, is like, it's not as simple as that. You know, every, every single decision that you make at this point, um, it has, has consequences, both good and bad. And if there is no right choice, it also means that there is no wrong choice, which feels kind of comforting in its own way. But just know that like, however you choose to move forward, um, it's not like you've, uh, like m missed a boat necessarily. It's just that um, uh, you're presented with uh, different choices. I think the worst thing to do is to not have a choice and be in a constant state of vacillation. Like once you, you need to kind of choose and commit to some degree for some period of time um, at some point, I guess. But yeah, there is, you free yourself from the feeling that like, I can make the wrong choice right now because there is, there is just no wrong choice. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, stay sort of like steady in the sense that, you know, when, when there are these moments, um, like for instance, when the stock mar market crashes, people want to sell everything because they're seeing their portfolio numbers or whatever. They're, they're like in panics, like people react emotionally. Um, it's really just important to stay steady and sort of like uh, hold, hold yourself in those moments of, um, in those moments of feeling and um, hold those feelings before you make a decision and um, go down a, a dark path. Because the truth is, is like, um, this is not humanity's first rodeo at this. This is something that's been, you know, a cyclical, a cyclical thing, like pandemics, epidemics, they, they come and go. Um, try to sort of, you know, uh, filter out the sort of like speculative thoughts as much as possible. I know that's really, 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 really hard to do. And especially when those speculative thoughts for myself is like, it's kind of fun to be manic. <laughs> it's like kind of fun to let myself go down those dark corridors. But, um, but you know, I'm really grateful for my friends who can like fish Big me fire out sign energy. I know. Big yeah. fire I'm sign energy. Oh, right now. A lot of <laughs> The things that you fire signs have been sending me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Rita. Like I don't have, I can spiral out by myself and cry in the corner. I don't need help doing that. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> that being said, I agree with Pam in terms of 
even with this whole, you know, hoarding, uh, continuing to go on. I don't know how people are still hoarding things. Um, there is a really big difference between thinking long-term and just having too much stuff like that. Like you, you could have, you could have bought a whole bunch of like, if you bought 20 oranges, you're fucking up right now. I'm going to be honest. I always kind of keep yeah, like two, uh, <laughs> paper you. towels, at least, at least, just at least, yeah, no, exactly. you know, I'm seeing the background. I was like, uh, should I, I, I have that? I did, <laughs> okay. I, I did pick the rolls and I think that's it, but that's important. That's important. And I was like, yeah, somebody's prepared over that. I see the supplies. The thing is, I'm sorry, cancer all day. I, I literally <laughs> cleaning supplies, you guys. I literally uh, yeah. cleaning myself. <laughs> I know it. But that's the same thing. Like I, I honestly, I was selling something. I was like, I've literally been prepared just in general because I've had cleaning supplies since August when I moved to this apartment. Right. And so it's it's also a thing of I did grow up with like parents who had a second freezer. Like I don't know any like African parents that don't have a second freezer. So I'm very- in that closet. Exactly, exactly. So there is a big difference like, you know, between, okay, we might need this one day, just how my house looks, um, and as opposed to, hey, I'm just buying a whole bunch of stuff because I'm panicking. Because you, you, you need to pick and choose the things that you're buying and also making smart choices when you're purchasing things like- Yeah, like, like have a list beforehand. So that way you're not sort of just like, you know, kind of frozen in the aisle. I had a friend call me, my really good friend Zoe, she called me from Walgreens and she was just like in the aisle, like crying because like the whole shelves were just, all the shelves were, and you know, if you are in that situation, call a friend. And I was like, hey, I got my list already, you know? And then we went through the list and got the stuff. And um, the truth is, it's okay. The most important thing is to like, feel your feelings, have a distress tolerance response to the point where, you know, once that moment passes, then you can take them. Like we have all the time in the world now in some ways. Um, so, so take it, take the time to feel your feelings, but don't necessarily do a lot of stuff from an emotional place as best you can. I know that's like almost impossible to do right now. Right, right, because we're constantly sitting in it. One thing I want to suggest is that the things that you're buying also, um, think about the ways in which they're being preserved. Like for example, when I went to the store, I was like, oh, I don't see any garlic, but then I saw vacuum sealed garlic that's already been peeled. That'll last you for months rather than you buying some kind of, you know, thing that's going to expire in the next week or so. So it's just thinking about the ways in which things are also packaged and the things that you can eat, like eat and consume. Your eating habits might change a bit, right? Um, but, you know, sometimes having tuna out of a can or a bag or whatever the fuck they're putting in now, it's not that bad. You know, you used to eat tuna before, then you start <laughs> You could go back to the tuna. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm speaking from personal experience. I haven't eaten tuna in a while and ate it this week. Um, and it was, tuna? It, was, it was good. I'm not gonna lie. But it's just thinking of things. It's like, hey, don't, don't sap one food source of yours. You have to, you have, to uh, have variety. So you might, you might even be eating healthier right now um, or consuming healthier things because you're having things like, say, peas, uh, which are really good for storage, uh, beans. You know, we'll t we'll talk about the specific food, uh, like food sovereignty and food safety at this point. But um. yeah, um, and also just like concentrating on the things that you can control instead of fixating on the things that you can't. For instance, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do right now, even if like funds are low or access to things are low. For instance, back up your hard drive everyone back up your hard drive do this regularly don't forget this is um you know a time for you to also do the due diligence of documenting your work Docu these, these are our archives our personal archives these are the things that people miss if the crises do spin out you know these are the things that people wish they took with them we have the benefit of storing so much information on these um, on these hard drives that that can pack up so quickly, you know, versus like, you know, our, my grandparents can, you know, didn't have this kind of like, uh, didn't have this kind of ability. So take the time, take the photos of your baby albums, you know, go through these happy memories, go through the things that are really precious to you. And uh, 
do it, you know, away from the internet <laughs> as best you can and back up your hard drive. You know, the personal archive is within our control in our homes somewhat. And so um, don't forget to do this. You know, whatever you decide to do or whatever happens, it's really important that um, we, we have a, a document of the work that we've done so far, the things that we are really proud of and the people, you know, that we really, um, uh, like the memories uh, are preserved in a meaningful way. And um, also Corona Diary. So, so Corona Diary is really key because um, the days start to blend together. Okay, I'm in week three. I've been, I've been quarantining a little bit longer than most people because I'm, um, uh, you know, like that. And uh, I just really wanted to sort of um, get ahead, I guess. Um, and, and I was, I basically, you know, pissed off my boss at Parsons and I was like, I'm not coming into class. They want to use my keyboard. Are you kidding me? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. And then I, and then before you know it, everyone was like, oh, wow. Okay. That was a good move. And I'm like, yes, I'm, you know, and um, so basically, you know, in time, a lot of times, you know, as time passes, things get, you know, you, you, you know, things start to, to mush together and your memories of each distinct day start to mush together. And if you're like me and you have asthma and allergies and it's really fucking with your head, like, you know, I had like a sniffle and I was like, oh my God, coronavirus. And so, you know, just the truth is, is like, I, I have like a little diary of it. And I'm like, okay, nothing has escalated. I, these are pretty much exactly like my allergy symptoms from last year. So <laughs> I can pretty much rule out, you know, that this is it. And it's, it's been sustained over the spring. So have a diary of, I had a list. Let's see. Let's look at my notes together. My notes included, okay. What you did so who you were with in case you, you know, did go on a walk or something, um, what you ate, where you went, uh, who you saw, flubs. Okay, so this is important. So it's like, you know, uh, don't go too crazy, but it's like, if like mm -hmm. a runner ra ran past you a little too close or some, you know, something that happened at the bodega or something or like, you know, like, <laughs> loves sometimes you like accidentally you know touch something you weren't supposed to it's okay it's okay just document it and you'll feel better um symptoms and moods most important you know because this is like uh this is a long game thing so take inventory of um of who you are of, of like where you are each day um and then you can look back and be like oh actually i was just like you know i, I thought i had symptoms but it turns out i don't and i'm just like you know having anxiety or you know, checking in with yourself and like pat yourself on the back for a lot of the progress that you've made. So, cause, cause like, um, this is, you know, growth can still happen in quarantine times. So I will um, also add that it's really important to like your cleaning habits in this, in at this time are also something to take note of. For example, I drink water out of these glass bottles, which is like, yay, environment, have a water filter. Um, sometimes like before this, I don't always wash them. I'll just refill them. And I started having a sore throat like a couple weeks ago and I was like, oh shit, quarantine. Now, all I had to do was wash the bottles. It turned out that it was the bottles, you know, just wash anything, any of your little canteens that you're drinking out of consistently, because while we're remembering to hydrate, we also have to remember just regular cleaning practices, right? And I know a bunch of you are like, oh, sh damn, haven't washed that water bottle in a minute. That little sore throat you have could just be bacteria. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> if if it never moves from next to the bed, is it? Yeah. Clean. You're gonna need to wash that right now. You're gonna need to. You're gonna need to disinfect the hell out of it. So, I just want to remind people because it happened to me. It happened to me, and uh, and it's okay because we do forget these things. You know, we're just picking up these bottles and like, yes, I'm drinking water. It's like, yeah, you're also drinking a whole bunch of other things. So, just just to remember that um, clean down your counters. Maybe just just a little bit, but also you, if you're not going anywhere. So I also don't want anybody to, um, to trigger perhaps their OCD or any of their anxiety. You, you don't- It's so you, challenging right you know, now, yeah. Okay, and I understand that people are dealing with a lot of different layers and, and this is something that's happening right now, but 
also I will be the person who's like tempering because Pam does tell me to do extreme shit and I do I do <laughs> like some extreme yeah. shit and I'm like I'm not doing that I'm not goddamn doing that that's too much so you have to find a little balance I appreciate that she tells me to do these things, but I'm also like, yeah, I'm not, no, I'm not, that's a, that's too many things. So there is, a, there's a point where it's too much, right? It's like, it's like defense spending. There's no upper <laughs> limit to this shit, you know, it's like, like you can't live your life in a bubble. We are these like undulating, marbling, like microbial, you know, set cesspools that are walking around just on a regular day. So mm -hmm. there's like, there's no containing it. We're not like these discrete plastic cubes. It's just, okay. you know, so that's just, the, that's just, that's just how it is. It's okay. And um, you know, it's all good. Just, yeah. that's it. just need boundaries. Don't, don't Lysol everything. You're kill You're going to hurt yourself. Ooh. Just remember that. Okay. Cause some people are wilding out. Do not Clorox wipe all your food that you Yeah, have. don't like, Clorox wipe. You don't want to, don't like, like toxicity is not as. You need to put in your mouth. Don't do that. Just don't do that. I don't know why. <laughs> Stress. It's not good to eat bleach. It's not good. Okay? Definitely not. That's, that said, you know, I know there's this big desire to want to help. And it's really real. Like everyone's kind of like, you know, uh, dealing with it, like, if, especially we're New Yorkers, right? We're like, we're like already like energetic, go getting kind of fucking crazy people who need a lot on our plate to feel sane. And so like, it makes perfect sense that you want in this moment to just like spin up and be this person that like, is like this like center for your community. And I think that that is absolutely 100% something that we need. But um, also, it's just really important. And it's real, I can't emphasize this enough, to eliminate yourself as a possible vector of transmission because a lot of people have very mild symptoms, have no symptoms at all, and coronavirus starts to create a viral load in the body uh, two days before symptoms even appear. So it's important to just take the time to social distance before you come together I, and like say like make a drop or something like that. So just be sure that you yourself are not accidentally, you know, doing more harm than good um, by spreading by spreading this thing because it's this thing, it just like, you know, it like cracked the code. It did. So so just, you know, I don't want to stress stress anyone out, but like just just make sure that you're not the one that's that's the vector of transmission right and that goes to the second point which is put your mask on before you put the mask on someone else yeah. check in with yourself ask yourself like okay i'm doing a million things to help a million people but like do i need help do i need somebody to talk to you do I need food? Do I need, like, am I feeling a little bit run down and I'm bedraggled, you know, and do I need to, like, take a moment for myself? And it's okay, in fact, better for everyone because you can't put a mask on another person if you're, you know, not around. So just, like, take care of yourself. Yeah, and if you need to scale back at any time, give yourself the permission to do so. There is no better time than now to scale the heck back. Like yeah. you, you don't need to do everything. You actually should be resting more uh, because a lot of us are operating out of a trauma response. I know that it's definitely uh, pe people, we have some people talked about this that they also are trying to figure out ways that they can energize themselves um, with not being able to leave. And it's a great thing that you guys found the rooftop in your place because getting fresh air is really important you know getting some sunlight some vitamin d is really important but we need to do it in safe ways and even if it's you just stepping out onto your steps and just sitting there for a little bit that's also really important i feel like yesterday for me i stayed indoors the whole time um my sister and i and her friends we've been doing virtual workouts together and we didn't do it yesterday and my day was very stressful um doing a virtual performance for I did it. I'll just tell y'all what happened. I was doing a virtual performance for five minutes and that troubleshooting took an hour and that shit didn't even make any sense when you think about that. Like what kind of math is that? So anyway. It was great I, though, Rena. It was great. Come on. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was relaxing, man. It was, it was really fun. good. 
Ableton failed me. But anyway, so <laughs> it would have been really beneficial for me to just step out, take a breath on, on the steps. Because, you know, we have to remind, remind ourselves too that nature is here with us. Like some of us have plants in the house. Check on your plants. Are you playing music for your plants? Are you, are you, you know, checking in with your plants, maybe talking to them a little bit, opening the window by where they are? Open, Open the, the win window. Are we are we showing plants right now, Parisa? Because yeah. I mean, like, listen. Because I mean, like, I'm totally the house. Let's Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Just say hey, hey, hey. beautiful. I, I love them. Look, look, look at them greens. Look at them greens. That's beautiful. See, <laughs> right, by, right by the window. That's also, right. Open this. Was like oh, and, and my OCD cancer self built them like a three tier little like. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, okay. Yes. This is an apartment building. I see that. Yes. That's so, so much love, right? <laughs> <laughs> Snake plants are like my favorite. Oh my God. They do so much for the air. It's just like, if you're looking for, you know, just like a little kind of like a air filter without an air filter, like a snake plant Ooh, is really nice. Okay. okay. They're look really, it. really great for like air purification. <laughs> amplify plant. it. Love yeah. You. Yes. Yeah, I love uh, plants are oh man, so, yeah, so, 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 so just who's remember. sprouting the chives? Is that I know Kira? Kira, Kira. Who got chives? It's Show me chives. Let me see. Hold on. I don't even have the full thing on. Let me see. Oh, that's beautiful. This is just four days. Wow. <gasps> yes. That's like wow. Yeah, see, go ahead and with your urban gardening. We're gonna need these chives soon. <laughs> Keep sprouting. Mm. Yeah. Well, some chives. Oh my God. Uh, yes, yeah. It's awesome chives. <laughs> I only have onions. So Let's have a chive exchange at the end of this. <laughs> also, somebody done. mentioned playing music uh, for their plants. I think it was, uh, I think it was Rena. Yeah. So I recently got a Venus fly trap and the first thing I did was play a trap music. I don't know if that's appropriate, <laughs> but like, you know, I just felt like my Venus fly trap deserved like you know, some trap music, some music that make it feel like it's home, you know, like. That's right. Because also in exchanging with your plants, you're also like, you're also interacting. I don't, so, so, so while I don't have pets, okay, I'm not capable of taking care of a, another uh, breathing uh, being, I want to put it that way. They are mammals. I know people have reptiles. Yeah, I know my limits. So the plants are what I can do. And so it is definitely an exchange. Like I actually wake up in the morning, I'm like, hey guys, how y'all doing over here? You know, just checking in with them and whatnot <laughs> and touching the leaves and chicken. <laughs> so I think it's really important to remember like, you know, there's other, other ways of interacting. I also do talk to my sister frequently. We don't want to completely spiral out here. Um, so <laughs> it's like, but, but other things, just remember like there is nature still around you, you know, here, listening, just even taking moments throughout your day. Cause you know, the birds are like really popping off right now. I'm, I'm sure they're having a field day out here. Um, but just checking in and like noticing like, Hey, I'm hearing birds chirping right now. You know, like just, just taking in your surroundings. Cause sometimes that can also ground you as well. So just wanna put that out. I've been thinking like, well, I've been meditating on what animals must be experiencing right now, which is probably like something pretty awesome. They're probably like, Oh my God, I got, I have a run on this world now. Like, <laughs> Like there was this amazing news article that was like the elephants have returned to Yunnan uh, province and now they like taken over the fields and like broke into someone's like like rice wine and Yo. got drunk and took in the fields and it was beautiful. It was disrespectful. Amazing. And my, my, my cat. Oh my god. Like my the monkeys cat running wild in India so and wild. stuff. Yeah. Yes. They're free. They're free. I'm sure the deer are like popping off in Pennsylvania right now. Like all the <laughs> Yo, even the like, pigeons have gotten like a little bit too like disrespectful I've and the squirrels. Like I've I don't understand. I don't know about all that. I don't know about that. Oh, okay. So <laughs> our high priority items <laughs> um, that you should have on hand, right? Uh, Pam made this list. I added a little bit to it because um, yeah. You, we all should have an antibacterial soap. Now, you, I know we, there are many ways to remember how long you're accounting for when you're washing your hands. I've been singing, um, oops, I did it again. 
is a little refrain because I honestly don't really know that many, like I know songs, but I'm, I'm not good with the lyrics. So I tend to make stuff up. So I might be fucking it up, but that one I haven't messed up. Also the happy birthday song also, right? Is it the whole thing, a piece of it? But remember, I just want to put this out there because I learned this. When you are washing your hands, you can definitely do this, but you got to get in the nooks and crannies, y'all. Don't you forget get, your you thumbs. Know. Don't forget your thumbs and your wrists. Yes, the yeah. little whatever. Get like get up in there. But that I didn't know about this. This little move right here, that little move. Yeah, I didn't know about that. So that's just a little reminder. A thermometer, if you can purchase one, that would be helpful. But we also tend to know, I feel like people do know when they have fevers, but a thermometer will definitely I feel like it, the reason why I put it as a high priority, and I know that it's not necessarily the most accessible, but I do think it's really important to get, is because you got to be checking, you got to know what your baseline is, you know, because you don't necessarily want to be in a situation where you're having to guess. Um, this goes back to the Corona diary, where you're kind of just like taking inventory with yourself, because it is the most prevalent symptom of all you know, even more than the cough, like some people don't even have the cough, but that fever, that like fever that doesn't break, um, it's really important that, you know, you have a way of measuring that if that is something that happens. And that's like the number one thing that um, we're, we're trying to hedge against um, more than anything. So um, on that goes to, this is more like stuff in case you get sick and like protecting yourself and also protecting other, one, other people in your immediate household from um, also catching it. So ibuprofen, acetaminophen, there's a lot of, you know, for the most part, you know, people have been uh, debating about it, go for it. If you have a fever, go for it, see what works for you. But definitely, um, if, if I, I think something also that, um, that H just, that just contributed in the group chat that's really good to note is that thermometer that you're talking about um, is important because if you are, which is more accessible is telehealth right now. So if you do need to call a doctor's office, because it's better to not have to go into any um, healthcare facility, specifically the hospital. You, you, we all want to avoid the hospital as much as possible. Uh, and it is better to go to an urgent care clinic if that is something that is happening, like if you are feeling symptoms. But it is really great if you don't have to go anywhere, then you can tell the doctor what your temperature is. So having a thermometer at home is helpful in that regard, because like Pam said, you can track your temperature over a couple of days you can talk to a doctor and then they'll be able to advise you on like what your next the best next steps are but i because we've been all reading this literature i would i would take acetamorphine if you do feel like you are feeling uh like you are having a fever or whatnot i would take that over ibuprofen just because you could potentially have symptoms you don't want to affect your system because it's been said that taking ibuprofen or cortisol like things that would uh, reduce inflammation those are not advised. Um, so I would lean on Tylenol instead at this time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, if you do get sick, yeah, one of the things is uh, water is really, uh, this is something that my friend whose mom works at the CDC told me is um, get some like Gatorade and electrolytes and some powder. I have electrolyte powder that I'm using um, called Ultima, like these little pack packets in case um, if you, are in a situation where you have a fever, um, getting hydrated and efficiently is really important. Sometimes when things progress, it's really hard for your body to hydrate on, on water alone. So having those like little electrolyte packets are just like so useful and so key. And um, you can get like the Ultima, there's um, Gatorade, there's all kinds of different ones. Um, make sure that you have the ability to get hydration in your body as fast as possible. Also, I would add to uh, coconut water is really uh, helpful as well. If you would like to go that route as well, um, things that are also probably easy, might be easier oh, yeah. to get depending on where you are is Pedialyte. When Pedialyte. I use box, um, we would have to, you know, make weight and you freaking dehydrate yourself. And so we'd have to drink Pedialyte. Now I'm going to just say it right now. You need to, chill that shit and get the fruit punch flavor because it's not good <laughs> it's really not that's the most tolerable flavor out there so if you if you have to um get you some fruit punch pedialyte and and chill it because that's gonna help you immensely but coconut water is also an option i know some people don't don't uh likes the coconut water but 
it is also just good. I know, I see you and my sister, you, you guys are anti-coconut water, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, and, and now the last part of the high priori priority item is a mask. Actually, Masks. Today, saying that gloves and masks are actually very useful. You know, we also have to remember that, um, uh, oh, thank you. H is giving, y'all need to get in this little chat if you haven't, because H is spilling some little, some little facts up in here. Thank you. Um, but uh, in addition to these things that keep changing, because we're in this very ever-changing uh, state, now ibuprofen apparently is fine. Um, having, uh, oh, did I just lose my train of thought? Uh, masks, yes, using masks and gloves because there's a point where, especially with our governments, uh, sadly, and <laughs> we've been in the state, they are not the most honest um, source right now. So before it came, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's very nice of you to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be as diplomatic as possible, also because I don't want to uh, bring that type of stress into the group because I'm sure we all have a bunch of rage that we have with our current administration and and other things but mass yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> um you do need those things if you need to even if you're making a mask out of cotton that still is preventing you from taking in things that you don't need to take in right like if you don't have a so, filter or anything that's protecting your face in this area your nose and mouth is still going to be useful for you so you definitely if you're going outside of being around other people um a mask and gloves are are going to help, help you are they going to reduce your contact I feel like if um, there is this um, belief that, oh, it, it doesn't have very high efficacy, it won't prevent you or whatever, but it will prevent other people from perhaps getting your droplets if you are asymptomatic. And the truth is they obviously work. Well, you know, they obviously work. That's why, like, but I think with, um, you know, Asian cultures that have been using masks for, you know, for a long time because of like urban pollution, um, and also because of SARS and the MERS outbreak. Um, for them, it's just kind of a herd, a herd immunity thing. Whereas if we all wear masks, we're uh, telegraphing to our other, you know, citizen, fellow citizens that, hey, you know, I'm doing what I can to protect you and you're doing what you can to protect me. And versus the West where it's like, oh my God, you're wearing a mask and you're Asian. This is punctured my denialism of like protective, like bubble of whatever. So uh, we, we got to do what we can to sort of like reverse that as, as quickly as possible. So if you see anyone like shaming anyone for like wearing a mask, just be like, hey, do you want one? <laughs> do you, would you like one? Um, like, you know, because honestly, uh, the, you know, it's important to also, you know, distribute masks to healthcare providers. I think that that was the motivation for why they said to not hoard masks was because it was actually just causing a run on masks and healthcare providers were not able to get it. But they do, you know, they, they said it, they couched it in a way that was like, masks don't even work. And it's like, okay, hold on. They like clearly do. Um, another thing about masks, what, not only is it the filtration, but it's also the fit on your face. So I used to work at a factory and as a fabricator as well, and um, with a lot of plastic dust and a lot of um, issues. And one of my main issues that I kept on having was I kept on, I had these very sophisticated re respirators, but they are not built for my face because I'm Asian. And so, you know, these masks might not fit you. So take an inventory, you know, do like a perfume test or a mint test, spray something. If you can still smell it through like a mask, that'll give you a gauge of like, sort of like what's going on if there's like a fit issue. Um, so it's important to sort of um, take inventory of how your mask is fitting. If there are gaps, um, there is something there um, that is, you know, you can double up masks and they, they do work. So if you don't have the means to access masks, this is in the case of a better than nothing situation. So a better than nothing mask is um, something that you prototype yourself with very, very cheap uh, materials that you might already have. So this is um, a paper that was written about a Hanes t-shirt prototype. So something you get, something you probably already have in your drawer is a t-shirt from like an ex or from, you know, whomever, or like, like a promotional t-shirt or whatever. Um, they have a knit 
um, like a knit uh, grain structure. So one thing that you can do is um, you want to actually change the grain direction. So like, you know how like a t-shirt, if you like look closely at a t-shirt, it's kind of in rows. You kind of want to like have the grain running in all these different kinds of directions so that you kind of create like a, you know, like a hexagonal mat. So using like eight different layers here was like kind of their solution. And it did yield some, you know, better than nothing results. So when making your own mask, it's not just like, you know, don't use a piece of linen where the like, where like the weave is really open. You want to make sure that you like, if you're using something that has more of an open textile grain, that you're just like changing up the direction, the orientation of that fabric in your mask and layering up. And so this is just with like regular knit jersey. Um, and also you can see here the way that they oriented it with these different ties. There's no gaps here around the face. So, so make sure that you um, have like a good fit. And um, if anyone gives you weird looks, just be like, uh, you know, I had some, uh, you know, whatever, you know, <laughs> who cares what people think, you know, pretty soon they're going to be like looking at you like you're the smartest person in the world. So like, um, you know, just, uh, just protect yourself. Don't worry too much about the social contract or social pressure. I also think that um, I'm seeing I, in the chat, we have a few questions um, concerning DIY masks. Um, the truth is that um that the filters do stop particulates like the the diy masks are definitely like this is what people are having to do because of the hoarding that unfortunately has happened um and also just the ill preparedness of this country in terms of having these things available for everybody so i i personally think that um eventually everybody should have a filtered mask on hand um, you can use a DIY mask for now, but also limit your need to go outside. Like that's the thing. But I, I do think that it is useful. It is more useful, of course, to have a filtered mask. There are things popping up all over the place, of course. So you have to be really careful. But even if you can um, get one eventually, because orders are going to start restocking, like that's just the reality of things. Things yeah. are going to be. So when they are restocked, I do recommend like, buying a, a box you, you don't need multiple boxes or even if it's like oh it has a pack of four or something i've been reusing an n95 mask i do weird things in my house and i'm sanding in my last place so i have an n95 mask from like a couple of years ago but those also apparently they expire as well like there but there there are masks that are out there that i think that eventually all of you should have a filtered mask um absolutely also, right there, really Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, can you can you read that question again? Sure. Which one is it? The about the DIY master. The we got one about bike riding for exercise. I personally feel like you should be wearing a mask if you're outside because, um, and we'll get to it in a little bit. But there is an urban density. There. This is an airborne. This is an airborne virus. Okay. And so like it. There is a, a something called a viral load which is sort of the, like the um, amount of uh, vir virality within um, a body and sort of the valence of contagion around a body that is positive, um, whether it's asymptomatic or not. So I do think that biking around the city, uh, you should just wear a mask and try to reduce the amount of time that you spend outside um, because, you know, if you look at what's happening in, in, in Italy and South Korea, you know, there's like trucks that are atomizing sanit sanitizer and creating like, like desanitation clouds that hit as many surfaces, but also are hitting the air. So I do think that it's really important that if you are outside to have some measure of protection. Now the virus also, uh, it, it's, it's different surfaces are, are differently hostile. So, mm -hmm. so like um, it survives on stainless steel and plastic the longest. So if you have those two materials, that's really, really key for you to, you know, the half-life is much longer on, uh, of the virus on those surfaces it hates sunlight and uv like any other kind of coronavirus and also but it doesn't necessarily kill it it just reduces the half-life 
Exactly. So definitely you should, you should, um, I think that getting uh, fresh air is important, it, but if you can exercise in your house, it's just safer. The, your, like Pam said, this was one of the first things that she told me. She was like, you going out the house? Look, the longer that you're out the house, the, the, the more severe that it will be if, if and when you do get something, just in general, but just in general, right? Like if it's flu season, if you're around a bunch of people that have the flu, it's going to suck when you get the flu, right? If you're around less people when the flu, when it's flu season, you might not even get it or it won't be that bad just because you haven't been exposed to it. So it's like the yeah. longer that you're exposing yourself. The, the, is, vol the volume of, of uh, viral load is super important because if, you're, if you are test positive, but you had a lower viral load that you were exposed to, your outcomes are better than say a medical professional who's constantly in this like, a denser viral load all the time. Right. So definitely fresh air and sunlight, but um, bike riding, uh, just the same way as walking, it, I, I would really, um, I would limit it. And if it's something that's really important that you need to go do, but otherwise, if you can like run in your house in place, I mean, we'll talk about the things that you can do. There's many things, not just running in the house. But. Sorry, I just have one more kind of follow up on the mask. Thing. Yes. It's, it's um so I'm like in a lot of these mutual aid groups and I know how to sew and sew pretty well um and a lot of them have been circulating asks from like hospital workers and home care workers for DIY masks and I have like six or seven different like pamphlets that are all varying degrees of like three layers of fabric but some of them are like this is basically useless if you don't have the filter and then some of them are like cardboard is there should I stop making these? <laughs> no, no, I think it's, they're definitely useful. In fact, I, I you know, the one thing that I think would be really useful that I, I want to prototype is a copper, is a copper mask because the copper is just, it just, it, the coronavirus just hates it and you can get copper thread. Um, but I will say that it, something's better than nothing. You know, and then in terms of that, like what are, like I'm starting to, I was using like old sheets and now I'm like, I'm like, I don't think I can breathe through denim personally, so I'm not going to do that. I'm like looking at it and I have t-shirts. Are there any other like common household fabrics or just like any kind of like knit cotton that you can breathe through? A knit cotton I think is great because it has um, the knit kind of uh, textile structure is stretchy and also um, there's just like a lot of coverage there. Ideally a rib a ribbed knit is better in different orientations. So you have some perpendicular to each other and like in like a diamond or all different kinds of patterns and just the multiple ply oriented in different ways is really, really key. Um, kind of think of it as like put like some ramen on your face. Like ramen is kind of like perfect because it, it's like a 3D structure. Cross hatch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You kind of want like multiple layers going in different directions. That's the key thing. And, and knits are great because they have that stretch. I say what's bad would be like linen or anything that's poly. Well, actually, you know, that's not true. In the case of masks, they're a, they're a spun bound poly, polypropylene. Uh, non-woven textile which is basically kind of like a flash rom it's like a really it's ramen noodle like the the ramen noodle structure is actually really really <laughs> so perfect in describing the way that the um, spun spun bound polypropylene textile works so um, you can't replicate you actually I think you could probably get rolls of polypropylene spun bound Tech, non woven textile. And that's exactly the same stuff that they're using um, to build these masks. You uh, repeat so, the full thing one more Sure, like, sure, oh, sure. Oh, oh, you, can, you can type it. Maybe you just type right in the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see how I can do this. Like spun, purple, <laughs> knit, poly, poly, poly. ramen. <laughs> is, I, oh, if you I, get. You have to get out of uh, a presentation mode. Oh, uh, or you can. I can. I can. Wait, ping you I can do this. I, I can do this. I can. Um, wait, no. I have text edit. Let me just do this. Okay, spun bound polypropylene. Oh, time check. Sorry. 
I'm just gonna give us a time check because um, I know we are getting, we have about 15 more minutes. <laughs> oh, we gotta get going. Okay, cool. Go ahead, sorry. My bad. I, yeah. it. I got it, I got it. It's all good. Um, yep, yeah, so we talked about, uh, we did talk about uh, sanitizing and making sure that you are sanitizing in a diligent and yet educated way. So um, making sure like when you come back into your house, of course, you're washing your hands, your, um, if you can like Clorox any or Lysol any surfaces that you need to, um, and your phones because we are in constant contact with those. Um, like Sige was saying, and Pam, you, you've mentioned here, finding alignment in your household, right? That's really important. Um, like with Allison and Emmett now, they have been uh, self-quarantining themselves, which is like, that's a really good thing that's going on and they're able to do that together. But then in households, we do have people that are leaving and going to and fro, um, making sure that they are following a protocol that you guys set in the house, because it's really important. They, I, I'm sure they don't want to be responsible for getting anybody sick. They don't want to be sick as well. And also just in general, th there needs to be unity because that nobody needs to be stressed out more than they are already right now, you know? Um, 100%. And, and um, I think- If your roommate needs convincing, um, yeah, there's an amazing resource that Kira made. Uh, Kira, if you could put that, if you're still around, can you put that in the chat? Uh, it's like a web comic um, to deal with roommates who might not take your concerns as seriously as you do. Um, it's really important that expectations are set early because this can precipitate into a lot of conflict within a household. And I think like, you know, I've like met people who've broken up over this stuff, you know, and like, it's real, like the conflict is real and, um, it's important at least to like, these are somebody, this is someone you have to trust with your, your health and safety. We're holding each other right now. So it's really important that um, everyone's kind of uh, on the same page and expectations are set early, early on that those hard conversations, if I'm kind of like, a, you know, getting better at being a more confrontational person. Um, Cause like, you know, if I do, I like, like conflict a little too much. So like my therapist is like, be less confrontational. And now I'm like, I have to, like, I've swung too far are in the other direction and now I need to be more comfortable having hard conversations you're not alone in this um, if that's some small comfort a lot of people are having some really really tense conversations with their loved ones and that's normal and you know you're not alone for sure okay I know unfortunately we we have there's so much information but we are gonna have to start wrapping it up okay if, okay if, food food if you guys are interested in doing a part two um let us know and okay wonderful yeah because we do have um we do have like specifics of in terms of like we pam and i spoke a lot in depth about food sovereignty like we want to make sure that you guys do have resources so that if you are in need of like free food or or thinking about delivery services and whatnot, and even um, like daily routine things, because we did, we kind of just touched on these things with the, um, the readiness check-in. But yeah, if we want to do a part two, then perhaps we can set that up maybe, you know. Okay. Um, but it was really lovely to commune with all of you here. I know, I'm sorry, I'm like rushing. I was like, okay, pack the shit up. Um, but I really just, um, yeah thank you bufu thank you everyone thank you thank you thank you like thank you everyone for you. being present and sharing together and allowing us to do this and if there's things that you want added if you can list it in the chat and then we can probably talk about those next time and we'll be a bit more succinct um <laughs> but no, 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 i know no, 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 i know cloud nine has a schedule but can we get like part two like this week yeah <laughs> Um, we will yeah. work it out. I don't know how long we're going to be like this, and this is like my comfort right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, my Virgo rising is like hard skills, please. Yeah. Taking notes. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Pam, Pam and I definitely will discuss doing a part two. I have, yeah, I have a lot of content. So Big thing. Um, <laughs> <birthday> <laughs> kit, I have, okay, real quick. I have, uh, if you're leaving, get a headlamp. I have a headlamp. I have my solar power 
I have my solar kit for charging my phone if I'm in a jam. Um, and oh my god, that's my cat. I'm sorry. Um, and you have your cat, you know, for it. <laughs> and I got my sleeping bag. And um, yeah, and so right now, if you see my screen, um, here are some resources for food. Um, people well, are giving we away. We, we, can, we, can, we can share the slides because I think, unfortunately, yeah, the yeah. session we, has happened. Yeah, we're definitely going to um, share the slides out. We're going to share the recording out. And we're going to do a part two because there's just so much good, juicy information. And so that one will definitely so be more succinct because it'll just be kind of a rundown of like, hey, check in and, and check in with the resources you have. And then these are the things that could help you. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. Right thank before we go, you. I just want everybody to just, again, take a deep breath in and let it out. We'll do two more, another deep breath in. And let it out. And the last one, a deep breath in. And let it out. Thank you all so very much. <laughs> Can I ask one more favor? Yeah. Um, so I'm on the mutual aid committee with Bufu. Would you mind if I include your slides in our resource doc? I know like y'all put a lot of labor in and we'll credit you and everything, but 100%. I think just having this to refer back to is extremely helpful. Um, thank you thank you all thank so, you much. so much thank this you. helped me you know this helped me organize my thoughts a little bit which were kind of like this tang tangle so thank you all for uh tasking us with this because it's been tremendous help for me for sure no, thank thank you both so thank much you. thank you so amazing oh, amazing so thank you just <laughs> minutes, in just a few minutes thank you zoom is happening on this same zoom link so if you want to come to queering zoom you can hop off and hop right back on so, so good. Right. love you all, Bye, all. Good things be well